So let's add some shape data fields to a shape. You can see here I've drawn a slightly more involved light bulb shape than you see in the book. And we want to define some new data fields for it. But before we do that, we need to be able to see the shape data window, which right now you see is not visible on the left hand side. So one way to do that is to go to the view menu, which we've already got selected here, click on task panes and choose shape data from the menu. Another way to do it is just to right click on the any shape, go to the data menu and click on the shape data sub menu. If shape data isn't showing, then Visio will bring it up for us. And you can see sure enough, this shape doesn't have any fields. So with the shape selected, we can right click on the shape data window and choose define shape data. And that brings up the shape data field definition box dialog. So let's type in an obvious one for a light bulb, which would be power, and we'll type watts in parentheses. We'll set its type to number, since that's always going to be a numerical value. We can set a format for it, including showing you know, a few decimal places and some units, but Visio really only supports linear units such as yards and feet and centimeters and meters or areas, you know, uh, square yards, square meters, square feet, etc. So that really doesn't apply to a light bulb. Also, the light bulb is not going to have any decimal values because generally light bulbs are rated in whole numbers of watts. So you can actually type in your own formats. You might have done this in Excel or other applications, something like that. That would always show, 0, 0.00 would always show two decimal values, even if the number was a whole number. We don't really need that for the light bulb, but I'll show you another trick that will allow us to show some extra text. And that is if we type in pound, that'll, that's a placeholder for the number. And there's no decimal, so we're not gonna show decimal. Then we can say backslash space. Now that says display a space after the pound sign. Then I hit backslash again and type in W, and that says display a W after the space. So you always have to type in a backslash before any special character, and Visio will take the backslash out and insert the special character. So we'll set a default value of 100. And that's all we got to do. There's a little summary down here at the bottom. Power watts, it's a number, and it has this format. So let's hit OK and see what happens. And you can see, sure enough, 100W is displayed in the field. If I control drag out a copy of this and type in, say, 35 and hit Enter, you can see when I reselect the shape that the W shows up, even though I didn't type it in. And when I select the value, the W disappears because it's simply a formatting Thing. I can kind of try to click away this from this field. It's a little bit easier when there's more fields to make it show up, but for now it's easier just to click on the, the shape again. So let's add a few more fields. We can right click on the shape as well, go to data, define shape data. The dialog pops up again and let's click new down here to get a new field. So we'll type in model and we'll leave that as string, which is just a developer's word for text. Format's really not important and we don't know the value so we'll just type in a placeholder to kind of remind the users that they should that they should enter a value so the little brackets will get, gets their attention. You can hit OK and you can see now we've got two shape data fields on the left. Now you can apply, you can define shape data fields for more than one shape at a time. So let's just control drag out a few more copies, select them all. Let's right click the define shape data item. Up comes our dialog. Let's add another field for bulb type. And this one we're going to make a fixed list, which is kind of a cool thing. And what that's going to do is put a drop down list in our shape data window. And the trick with the fixed list is to enter the items that can be in the list and separate them by semicolons. So there's compact fluorescent, halogen, semicolon, incandescent, can you spell it? Semicolon, LED, and we'll allow for some other technology. So that's all we need to do for format. For the value, we could 
select other or something like that or just leave it blank. Since it's a fixed list, they'll have to pick something. And let's see here. So we've got three defined down here. Here's a summary. Let's add one more. Let's add another one called surveyed. So imagine where we have some sort of visio based graphical solution where people are going from room to room in a building or an office or a home and they're dropping a shape on the page for every light bulb in in the building and they're noting down its each light bulb's characteristics in these shape data fields they might want to know when they actually surveyed the the, uh, the thing so we can say oh this wasn't done for three years this light bulb might not even be there anymore let's go double check to see if it's still there so of course I just mentioned that's a date type of a thing so let's choose date from the list and you'll see now the format options are quite a bit different because it's a date before we we, we looked at the format possibilities for a number and now we've got a date type of field so we get all these different types of things so you could choose something like that and you can even edit these and make them look the way you want. Since I, I'm an American living in Europe and Americans and Europeans disagree on whether the date should be first or the month should be first, I switch it around to what I call the sortable date format and I say three, four, 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 four little Y's for the full year and then I put a dot then I put two capital M's for the month so the two M's mean we'll have 01, 02, 03 for the, the months at the beginning of the year and then a dot and then two little days D, D, two little D's for the day and that's okay we've got four data fields now you can see the formatting here the data type there we'll hit OK and you'll notice that each shape got the new data field which is pretty cool so let's look at the new ones we added bulb type that's a fixed list so now we can set that one as compact fluorescent and a neat thing about shape data fields is if two shapes have the same uh, two or more selected shapes have the same fields you can select them and set them at the same time so let's set both of these to incandescent you can see that's incandescent that's incandescent and that's CF. So not only can you define shape data fields for multiple fields at the same time, you can assign values as well. So let's look at the surveyed field. That was a date field. If we click on that, we get this little dot dot dot, which allows us to select a date. So you can tell what day I'm doing this. April 27th, 2011. If I click on that, Visio puts in a date like that. Now, I'm an American so I usually would type the date as 4-27-2011. Oops, what happened there? Let's start over. I think my autosave went off. 4-27-2011. If I hit return, Visio is pretty good at detecting my standard date, date entry and then reformats it to look like the format that I specified. So let's try that again. It's 4-29-2011. going to do it on Friday instead of on Wednesday and you can see 2011 04 29 sure enough there we go so that's all there is to it for defining shape data fields remember you can you can either right click on the shape data window or right click on a shape to get to the define shape data window dialog and some of the tricky parts are the formatting especially for the fixed list you want to make sure to remember to put semicolons between the list and there's also a edit a variable list that follows the same rules. The only difference between fixed and variable is that with variable list, the user can enter their own data, which arguably might be a good idea for the light bulb shapes. But since we have othered, we've got ourselves covered for the, the case of technology we don't know about that might be coming down the road. So I hope you have fun with these, uh, experiment with them, put them to good use. Uh, it just makes Visio diagrams worth all that much more when you've got not only graphics that illustrate the point of what you're trying to communicate, but also data behind them that can be used in reporting or other visualizations. So there you go, shape data fields.